if you swing a two pound club into a back circle here, yeah. the club changes to four pounds when it falls down here, two pounds. So this is to swing it behind your head like this inward, drop it halfway down, swing it through. That is one of the greatest benefits of club swinging or any type of swinging whatsoever. Mm. It's Any type of swing? Or? No, no, well, no. <laughs> swinging of this type of stuff. Okay, so this is basic. There's nothing wrong with this. No. That both arms as straight as possible here. But to me, I like to do it that, that I've switched my leading hand from my right hand to my left hand now. I'm a Dutchman, yeah. on the production. Like this, yeah. Boom and welcome to another video of the Flowing Dutchman and look where I am. I'm here with the one and only master Paul Duras Wolkowinski. Hello there. <laughs> and uh, this is actually interesting because uh, I have uh, seen and been very much inspired by Paul Paul's videos when I first started to get introduced to the swinging arts and uh, he was also my big inspiration when I went to uh, India for the first time because Paul has gone to India before and his videos are amazing about the, the old wrestling culture in India well if you see my videos you know uh, you know now what that looks like so if you're gonna strike and you want to strike very very hard you're not going to do this. Mm. You want to do that. So I mean, you're going to lift the sword up high. So consequently, the meal should lift up, mm. swing, and crash down. Mm. But you're going to you're going to stop that crash by by turning your hand underneath the meal. So your hand travels down first. Then the, the, um, the, the so you know, first of all, it's the and again as before the elbow, the hand, the meal comes down here mm. to to stop the um, to stop the fall. But I mean, if you were to extend that, to extend your arm forward, and this is where um, the the um, there's a great similarity between, um, for example, an Indian club swing where um, we've got the same movements. So if I go inwards, so there's the movement here, and if it was a sword, I could do that. But in Indian clubs, we now swing on the frontal plane. Mm. But it's a sword movement. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. uses the same muscles. Same muscles and you can reverse it. So I mean, you know, you can undercut like this. Yeah. And you can cut down. Or you can cut at an angle, I suppose you could do. I mean all sorts. I mean, I'm no swordsman, so I'm gonna lose some but I'm, I would imagine that and that's the way from work when I've met people who do sword work, that's what they talk about then there's a huge similarity and, and the, basically the balance of these things it re re represents the sword. So going back to the days of the Raj, the, um, it was a lot cheaper for the British Army to provide something like this mm. as it was to provide steel swords which would have been brought in from England in those days. Right. So there would have been a massive expense. And you know they were called in, um, Indian. In, 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 interest, interesting still that um, the, the club culture that is now starting uh, to be revived in India. Yes. It's mostly based based around wood because wood is is, is relatively of um, easy to make and cheaper for them. Yeah. But it's it's very it's, it's very expensive for us to make in well, the Western countries. Yeah. No, so absolutely. we have all the steel ones and they have all the wooden ones. Which yes. Is still, yeah. It's still happening. So. It is still happening, which is really, really, really strange. Yeah. If you think about it, um, now if you if you swing parallel heart shapes, so here to here, just the upper body rotating the shoulders through, and I basically like to bring this hand opposite this shoulder when I'm bringing the club down, so this elbow is bent, and then it reverses on this side. This elbow is bent turning to the side. So now if you watch from the, from here, mm. what does that remind you of? It's the three, uh, it's the, if you think about it, the mace swing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we go, so I mean you've got that, that, yep. that, that. So it's a 
parallel swing. It's a parallel it, to all well, intents and purposes. purposes yeah, the, yeah. the technique is virtually identical. Well, if you if you think about this, when you're doing a two-handed swing, if you're doing a two-handed swing, one hand is going inside, one hand is going outside. Correct. So if you're having two Indian clubs, then if you you do the do them crossing, one is doing the ins both are doing the inside or the outside. When when you have them parallel, then one is doing the inside and one is doing, doing the outside. Doing the outside, correct. So that yeah. would be. Yeah. It's very, very similar that. I mean, and it's, um, from a teaching point of view, it's very, very good to teach with Indian clubs first because that parallel swing, I mean, people will learn the front circle first, so it's just in the front of the body. Yeah. And then this is a great introduction to the back circle because people don't even know that they're doing it. Mm. And it's a back circle. It was actually created there just by the rotation of the shoulders. Yeah. 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 So Paul, I've, I've, I've got another question, because um, your, your company is Indian Clubs, right? Yeah. Indian Clubs. Well, I mean, I, I, the, the website's indianclubs.com.au, but I mean, right. I don't actually have a company, it's just I okay. just call myself Indian Clubs. Yeah. Indian Clubs. And um, so where does that word come from? What is like the, because it, it seems to be a name that wasn't um given by the indian people themselves right <laughs> no it's not no the, 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 that would be a little bit when the, as as people were demobbed during the the raj and then they went back to england and they went back to germany um because there were germans de involved demobbed de that means it, 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 they exit the army ah. demob is oh, exit, right. ex exiting the army mm -hmm. they took clubs back to europe and, um, and this was around what, what time period? 1830s, 1840s. The beginnings of it were. It became really big around about the 1850s, 1860s. Right. Um, Kehoe, um, who made these clubs here, he was his first book was 1866. 1866. Yeah, and th this is the club that basically the shape of the club that's featured in his book. So I've never seen the small clubs. Eh, maybe one pair, but you you won't find the smaller ones in India. No. Is that so, so what is there the so, so around 1840 when they were demobbed they brought bigger clubs back home or like similar to no they would have they, they, from what I can work out is that this is this is considered a military club right so it's there's no fancy treatment on it the weight is quite a long way down towards the end of the club mm -hmm. and from what I know about this this is a military club that was used by the English army and um, Navy to train their uh, tra train soldiers. And was it inspired by the Indian by the the, the by the jo this? by the Jorian mace to my way of thinking. And the Mudgar maybe. And the Mudgar, yeah, yeah, I think the Mudgar had a lot to do had to do yeah. with it. But I mean, this is you know if you think about it, this is almost getting too long. Right. So it was shortened and made fatter. But technically, I mean, in my opinion, this should be called an English club, not an Indian club. Yeah. Because it was it was the English who really sort of went to town on it and created the um, the, the, or the shape was created, you know, to, to become yeah. this, and then there were variations on it. Um, and, and this one eventually turned out into the smaller ones we see. Yeah, no. Well, the thing is, I mean, okay. So Kehoe, just take your camera up here. This is Professor Harrison. A drawing made, made, made from another drawing by a good friend of mine, um, Chris Denning, in the Canada. Mm. And now oh, yeah, yeah, you no, can yeah. see he's wow. got um, he's got huge Persian-style clubs there. Yeah. And he was very famous, and he was an English strongman mm. that used to swing those, and he swung them for the royalty, and um, you know, and so on, and di and displays in England. Now, Kehoe was an American. Mm. who went to the UK, saw this, came up with this. But at the same time, England had these in. So okay. the military were using them, but basically the ones that were the most prominent mid 1800s were, were these sort of, you know, the meal shapes, meal shape. the meal shapes. Also in India. And well, also in India, I mean, you know, we don't know where, I mean, because looking at those, they look like meals to me because yeah. they come waist high. Right. If there were jewelry, there'd be a lot, higher, you know, in, pr in proportion, there would be higher. Sure, sure. Body-wise, so it's mm. an interesting sort of, um, you know, it, it's, as you say, I mean, it's very hard to tell where it originated from because mm. there is such a mix of cultures and everything yeah, else yeah. along there. But there's a big history of these clubs being used in the West. Yes. Yeah. 
So yeah. it was brought to, to England around uh, the, from the 1840s, 1850s, 1860s. Yeah, so I mean, basically, the, the, uh, just to sort of give you another example, these clubs are called scepters. Scepters. These were you know, kind of, from what I understand, they were, they were created to st get, basically, as women became more freer, and movement-wise, they were encouraged to swing clubs. In those days, women were still wore very tight corsets. Right. And, um, you know, very restrictive movement. It wasn't, and they were basically encouraged. And one of the first exercises that was done with these was like this. We should turn them that way, mm. that way, that way, that way. Mm. And then um, I would think, I would imagine that circles like these would have come into being at sure. one stage. And then the clubs would have made this type of movement. These clubs were very, very popular to teach children to swing Indian clubs and were very often used in schools going now much later, sort of, you know, towards the end of the 1500s. Mm. Sorry, 1800s, pardon me. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, this is, this is like a mace if you think about it. Yeah, it is. I love these. Yeah. So they, really... they, they almost swing on their, on their own. I love that. Yeah. And the, I mean, the button makes, it makes them very sort of comfortable to swing. These clubs here are um, calisthenic clubs. Calisthenic. Yeah, they were used in, especially in Russia. Calisthenics were huge, mm -hmm. and um, they, the the girls would do all sorts of somersaults with them, um, mainly women. Mm -hmm. All sorts of, and you know, like the, you see sometimes in the Olympics with ribbons at the end of clubs. Mm -hmm. This is what these were for. Right. So it's a very very lightweight club, but I mean, it's still got that little bit of weight at the end. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you've, you've still got that sort of... Oh, that's very light, yeah. indeed. Yeah, but it still has, you know, you, you can still manipulate it and, you know, as far as um, movement of, of your, you know, mobility wise, sure, it's sure. great. Yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, move your arms more, that's all. Yeah. These are interesting, eh? Yeah, well, no, these, are, <laughs> these are kids, these are kids' yeah. meals from Iran. No way! Yes! Are they? They're yeah. actual, I thought they were like... Uh, you know, the, oh. yeah, that exercise that I'll show you, <laughs> little kids stand there doing this. What? Yeah, I've seen them do it. Well, I've seen them do it. Uh, this How kids. much do they weigh? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Hang on. Like, oh, so. they're a little bit heavier than I thought. Yeah, because they're walnut. They're, they're walnut. Gram. 250 grams. 250, yeah. yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, they're a little heavier than I figured. You know, they're, because they're walnuts. I mean, it's, it's, these are walnut also. Right, right. Um, actually, they have to go the other way around because they're not exactly the same. Ah. Yeah. So, so, so then we have a whole collection over here. These these look quite similar with these bands. Are these all? Yeah. So this is this is um, no. So basically, this club here was a progression on this. So you, I mean, it, that was the first set, second set, third, fourth. And, and, and with a progression, you mean your own progression? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or? Making, making, styling the clubs, yeah. Because you, you make them yourself. Right? Yes, yeah. So styling the clubs, and when I was messing around, you can see, for example... Yeah, where did you, where did you um, progress to this, uh, well, basically a sword, sword? Well, yeah, no, so it's like a hilt, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, the, you can see here, for instance, these pommels are still quite large, and right. these ones now are, are, are much better size. But they were they were um, clubs that I made and made you know as a progression. That's another pair that was experimental, um, mm. you know, very much in that sort of vein of trying to get the right length, do the weight distribution, and so on, and and the grip. Because I mean, if you think about it. When you put your hand there, mm. you know your your palm recesses here, so consequently that makes a lot of sense. It does. Um, and then you can grip the clubs here, so you can have a you have a hold of it. Yeah, it does feel good. But then, then, then it's not really necessary to have your pinky all the way down. No, no, no. So I mean, no, it's not necessary. But I mean, I'm a still a great advocate of. Um, you know, the ring finger in Indian club work is really, really important and it basically it, clubs should always hang from the ring finger, mm. even if it's in the sabre grip here, mm. coming up to here, sabre grip, when you bring the club down, it goes into a hammer grip, mm. then you can go into a ring grip there. Right. Ah, 
Yeah, so the ring grip is a lot more support. Yes, maybe. there's a lot more support. Oh, right. um, and then basically, you know, coming out of the ring grip into the hammer grip, yeah. you know, you don't want that club to slide right, down, right, right. which means, for example, if you use a, um, hang on, one of these clubs, for example, that doesn't have the guard on it, mm. going from a ring grip, one of the most common mistakes is that. You on. don't because you've got nothing to grab no. hold of now as you're bringing the club up. So you know having a good ring grip there is really important. Yeah, yeah. You, have have it, you have to have it solid. Yeah. So, in your mind, would you call these then Indian clubs? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I would call them Indian clubs. So, but but there's like um there's a transition where Indian clubs become mules or mudgars, or would you say that Indian clubs, the mudgars are also Indian clubs? I would say that, yeah, no, I mean, I think the, um, the Mudgar and the Jory and the Meal are sort of the grandparents of Indian clubs. Because the, right. the Indian clubs... But, but you would, you would, um, so, so, so you would make a difference in naming them, it's not just... A yes, yeah, but there is, and I mean, you know, especially if you go down south and, and have a look at some of the, um, the, the clubs that are there that are more like a sort of um, a cylindrical shape. They don't, um, to my mind, I, I still question the reality of those clubs because of one very, very important thing. And um, let's just, no, I'll take one of this one here. The meal in its own right, narrow shoulder, wide base. Mm -hmm. It fits into the body here, mm -hmm. from here. So I mean, it, it's, can, I can hold it close to my waist, shoulders are set back here. Now, if the meal goes to the back here, it's in reverse. It, the, the narrow shoulder has to miss my shoulder blade mm. and the, the, um, the base of the meal fits into the small of my back. Mm -hmm. So the design of this club is really much more superior to my way of thinking than to the, the barrel shaped clubs. Like the jewelry, these ones. Well, to, the, to a certain degree, yeah. like, the, like the jewelry, but I mean, the, the, you know, this, this, this jewelry here is a copy of the nail jewelry, but without the nails. Right. That's the first one that I thought that I could swing on my own. Mm -hmm. So that's what, you know, that's my, my um, sure. idea of making that one. Sure. Then, I mean, some of the jewelry, some of the, um, going back to the jewelry styles, there are thin jewelry, which are much easier to hold onto the shoulder because they have this cone shape. Yeah, yeah, they start very, very Yeah, the, and, and then as they get bigger and bigger, you have to really, they, all the um, athletes hold their shoulders out like this to create the dip mm -hmm. in the top of the shoulder to hold the, um, the jewelry in place. So would you say that there are then um, around four different styles of clubs, like in general, you have the Indian clubs, um, or light clubs, and then you have the mudgars, which are the clubs, and the meals, and then the jories. Or would you say that there are more uh, different styles of clubs? Well, there's there's also Kerala Katai. If you go down oh, yeah, south, yeah. I mean, there's five styles of Kerala Katai that yeah. I'm aware of, and apparently each one of those clubs breaks down into and was used by farmers or different yeah. type of um, you know work. Oh, so the, those are now the last thing I wanted to talk about is, is these, the yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. axes. Yeah, the axes because those are very interesting. Axes were um, so just very very quickly. Tom Burrows was an Australian born born in Ballarat in Australia, right. which is a gold mining town. Right. He was one of the first people in Australia who. Um, insisted on bringing miners up into the fresh air to breathe some fresh air out of the mines mm. before going down. I mean, he was very, very conscious of um, the um, contaminated air within mines. Mm. And he used to obviously do displays with the Indian clubs. Sure. And um, just as a matter of interest, if you could sort of have a quick look over here. This, this is a plan that I worked out for a, 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 a sequence of club swinging inspired by Tom, Tom Burrows mm. of um, different sequences and all, this basic guy to swing this non-stop. So I mean I know each one of these um, letters represents a certain type of um, sequence because they're all sequences. I mean so the, you know, and then Tom Burrows basically also Double. swung um, axes like these ones here and uh, the axes 
was swung in the same way, but the, 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 the weight is off center, so the axes turn and you can swing them mm. like this, but they, you can see that I, I, I have to make sure that I'm turning my hand through yeah, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> they turn as uh, I'm holding them. It's kind of similar to sledgehammers. Yeah, yeah I suppose so, yeah. yeah. Because also the, the, the weight is, is in a rectangle shape. Correct, so you yeah. Which well, should you be similar to the Hungarian hammer. Ah, oh, right, yeah. Yeah. Could you, could you swing that? Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> sure. Hungarian so, hammer. Is this is from Hungary? Yeah, so this, this was given to me by um, Tamas Kaczmarski when yes. I was there. Yeah. And this is a very interesting swing, swing because uh, you might want to step a bit further back. Just go right back, right back, right back. So, so this is, the idea of this is to swing it behind your head like this, inward. Right. Drop it halfway down, swing it through, change hands, and then up to here. Yeah. Swing it through, regrip, swing through, swing through, regrip. Right. That's the technique for this. Cool. And it's surprising what it does to your grip work. I can, I can see that. Yeah, just the changing of position. Yes, yeah. and I mean you've got to you, you've got to confidently. S do that and then basically on the swing up is that uh, it's a beautiful hammer yeah it is no it's, it's beautifully made yeah. and i love that this is what i do like about this has got an oval handle yeah so that you know which way the head is lying oh that's interesting yeah so you can feel you, you know you haven't got the danger of the head coming around to your back in that position no. here which would no. hit you yeah yeah exactly so you're always well, slash hammer should have this too <laughs> yeah, no, they should have an oval, oval, oval handle, yeah. Yeah, interesting. Is this actually uh, like a Hungarian hammer? Is this like traditionally also the sort of swing from Hungarian? Well, it was, this was apparently used in forests um, for, for logging and stuff. So where they would be splitting logs and that type mm. of work would be done with these type of hammers. And, you know, and it's, it's a bit like the, the kettlebells, I suppose. I mean, the kettlebells originally, Russian kettlebells were used as as weights in markets for measuring out grain. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah, and this is the same sort of thing. This, this actually had a physical use. Right. You know, and again, so I mean, going back to Indian clubs, I mean, they had a use because they were inspired by swords. Mm. You know, so they've all got roots. I mean, meals, again, swords and the, this, you know, the shields. This is also what gives them their foundation. Yes, but it's also why yeah, less popular, maybe because we have, we we don't use shields, we don't use swords. No, but the thing is, I mean, but I think what one of the biggest biggest benefits of club swinging is the fact that um, with any of this um, stuff, I'm just going to pop this back up. Yeah, sure. So with any of this, is you've got to consider the change in weight when you swing a club. So a two pound club like this one. If I swing it on a straight arm, mm -hmm. as I swing down, I allow gravity to take it over. By the time it reaches my feet, it's eight pounds. And then it comes back up again and it's two pounds. So you've got skeletal support in this position here mm -hmm. and gravity and inertia swing, swinging. So I mean, from here, gravity works to here. It swings, it over swings my center line. From there, I have to pull it up at the same speed to bring it up to this position here. So there's a change in weight because of gravity. You've got to use gravity, you can't muscle this. You've got to use gravity, same with the gutter. I mean, you use that, so in, for instance, a 10 kilo gutter, by the time it reaches your center back, it's 30 kilos, it triples in weight, roughly. And then you, you're gonna pull it out of the swing, you know, you're letting gravity do its work on the downward, and then you're pulling it up out of the downward swing back over to the front of the body mm. and you're pulling basically on 30 on 30 kilos and then it lightens as it comes back up again so you know like for instance in in um, weightlifting they use chains on the on the barbells yeah, and yeah. stuff to increase the load as the as the barbell goes up yeah. this is really the same sort of concept um, just the, again for, the, for instance for an example if you swing a two pound club into a back circle here yeah. the club changes to four pounds when it falls down here two pounds so it, it, i can feel it getting heavier every time i swing it down Interesting. yeah some gravitational pull is really really important in club swinging 
And that is one of the greatest benefits of club swinging or any type of swinging whatsoever. It's any type of swinging? Bro? No, no, well, no. <laughs> swinging of this type of stuff. Because no, I mean, there's there's a there's a situation where where um, I mean, with people that I've trained that have been using um, club belts, right, and tack fit. Yeah, I'm not knocking. I'm not knocking tack right. fit. But they do this, they go like this, and like this. Right. It's not a swing, it's muscling in the club. Yeah. Because the swing comes out to the side. Sure. Yeah, yeah, so that's the, the difference. Plane. Yeah. So, I mean, you're swinging on a plane as opposed to lifting it over your head and then pulling sure. it back forward. Sure. Could, could you elaborate on, you know, that particular benefit? Because, the, so, so what would be, what would be that? benefit then the fact that it changes in weight and becomes heavier once it goes down well I think the benefit is that you're um, it's increasing the resistance on your arm or whatever part of but you know whatever yeah, part of your shoulder yeah. elbow arm that you're swinging sure. it's pulling out all the connective tissue mm -hmm. and also from, from just if we take the, 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 the simple front circle first all the blood's draining out of my arm right now the minute I go down to the bottom it's flying back again. Sure. So it's increasing blood flow. Yeah, because I would imagine that if you hold up your arm, it's already pretty, it, it gets hard, pretty difficult. So if you let somebody use the very small clubs, they'll be, if you get them all the way up with their arms, yes. so they will see like, oh, this is pretty heavy. Yes. But it is mainly because of the weight of the arm as well. It's weight of the arm and, and you know, lifting it up. So I mean, I think that it, it basically it's the connective tissue of the tendons and everything else and the, the, the muscles that are working the arm sure. are being exercised and with a changing weight. Yeah. I, th I think that's the important thing to th consider. Yeah. Plus, um, just going back to the, the, the movement of this, the shoulder, to get a full movement, mm. the elbow has to come into the midline and the biceps has to be at shoulder level, not down here. Right. So that, that way, and if you think about it now, if, you, if I just do a transition, so if the club if the club's at the front of the body, the elbow is forward. Mm. The club goes round to the back, the shoulder opens, and then goes to the back. Right. So that it clears my back before it comes back out again, and then I can guide it back to down to the front again. So it's transitioning from the front to the back of the body, yeah. there and back. And of course, there are many, 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 many more benefits to it. Yeah. Only talking about the, mm. but the gravitational pull is, is is very interesting, especially the fact that it changes in weight, because you have actually have to. Um, you have to adjust. You have to adjust because it's all the way at the hand, right? Yes. And, and you actually have to ground yourself from the feet up. So the, the, yes. the fact that there is this pendulum and momentum mm. actually creates um, a very grounded root yes. uh, strength, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is needed for wrestling and all these. Absolutely. So how, how strict are you with that, um, that why kind of? Um, I try to do it, you know. <laughs> because it, I found that it's very difficult to teach when you come in front, especially if you do them in a crossing way. Because you yeah, cannot, there's, you cannot okay, there's, there, right? there's some very yeah no you, the elbow should be bent when it's coming in the front yeah yeah so this hand has to be straight this this elbow has to be bent right. some people okay so this is basic there's nothing wrong with this no. that both arms as straight as possible here yeah. but to me I like to do it that, yeah, that yeah, way yeah. so I mean you can push out the same yeah yeah. yeah. So that's, that's the difference that I like to sort of install. But in the beginning, people can't do that. They can't coordinate their arms properly to, to get that to work. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, even, even for instance, with um, the front circle, with, this is when you would start teaching them that. Mm -hmm. So when the front circle comes down, the clubs come down together. Look at the distance. This hand is at the tip of this club. This elbow's bent. As they come through the front, the shoulders square up yep. in reverse. Y position, or I position as some people call it. So there's, there's that circle there. Mm -hmm. And that's the, tr the basic training for the bent arm. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's very cool. 
So you're not you're not yeah. you're not working straight on straight away. No, 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 no. no. Oh, this is okay. Yeah. Um, sure. So. Yeah, it is indeed. What what I found interesting is that the because what I noticed because I'm so used to swinging the oh a bigger the, um, oh, so just touch the, yeah. Yeah. because I sw because I swing the mace so much. Is the the turning of the body is actually used? Uh, you usually use that, right? Because it, the the basis of two-handed mace swinging is parallel. One goes inside, one goes outside. Yes, correct. Um, but with the Indian clubs, you will have to transition between the crossing. Yes. Where they actually move, where you cannot move your shoulders Sh forward. Correct. Yeah. So there is this big difference that you cannot really. That's a synchronous as opposed to asynchronous. Right. Yeah. So you, you, you cannot really go turn and then aim towards that side. No. Because if you would do it parallel, you could easily straighten them out like this. Yes. Yeah. But then you would have to change your your body position on 80 degrees. Correct, yeah. Mm. So if, if any club swing was only parallel, then it would be different. <laughs> so have you tried doing that, that movement there um, in a sagittal version? Yeah. That's it, yeah, figure of eight, yeah. That's a really nice move. Great for sp spinal rotation. Yeah. So Indian clubs basically is, um, majority of it, regardless of whether it's um, synchronous or asynchronous, two count. Yes. If, you do, if you add a third circle, if you add a third circle in, so let's say front circle, back circle, wrist circle, that's a three count. If you add a fourth circle in, it will become a four count. But there's also a, um, a four count method, which is um, a lot of people don't. Um, oh, let me show you. Yeah. <laughs> so this is this is a two count. So one, two, right. one, two. One, two, asynchronous, one, two. Right. But four count is what's called the follow or the windmill. So one arm leads, the other one follows. Like this. Yeah, I've noticed this, but this seems more like a one count almost. No, no, no. So it's one, two, three, four. There's four right. circles. Right. All in, done independently. So it's yep. one, two, three, four. Yep. One, two, three. To parallels using the back circle one, two, three, four. So the transition it means that I've switched my leading hand from my right hand to my left hand now. So now going inward, changing the leading hand now to my right hand. Okay, and now I do a wrist circle that way to change back, and then do a wrist circle that way to go back to here. That's awesome. Do you have a name for when one hand moves? Because you have, like, in my mind, you have the crossing and the parallel. You have the asynchronous and the synchronous. Yes. Is there also a way to depict the fact that one hand is doing something else than the other? And you can also do that asynchronous and synchronous. Yes. No. You could. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which I've just done just now. Yeah. Um, the interesting thing about this is that to change the direction of a club, you either have to change the speed you have to change the speed of one of the clubs. So for example, just for example here, if you go outward, one, two, now watch my left arm, two, one, two, double circle, one, two, one, two, and if I want to switch out, it double circles back, out. Changes the, it changes the rhythm. Sure. Now, um, the, some of the transitions, for example, if you want to go from outward to inward, you use the Indian cross, which is one, two, one, Indian cross, two, mm -hmm. and now a wrist circle, which is a, a, a pendulum drop down. So the, I mean, we use we use pendulums as a transition, mm. or you can use a, a small circle vis-a-vis -a, -vis a large circle as a transition. This is where stuff gets really, really complex. I know, I know. Yeah. Always dazzled by the seeming complexity of light club swinging, Light Clubs 101 will bring an end to that. In Light Clubs 101, you will learn 
the absolute fundamentals of light club swinging, also known as Indian clubs. You will learn how to distinguish between crossing and parallel swinging directions. Light Clubs 101 will go further than just teaching you the swings. It will also teach you how to fluidly transition between exercises and also swinging directions. I believe this course is perfect to understand and master the absolute fundamentals of light club swinging and will open up the world of light clubs to you. Will I see you on the other side? Join now on DutchFlowAcademy.com. Boom! Thank you for your attention, it's greatly appreciated. If you like the content, please consider to share, like and subscribe to my channel. If you want to see similar videos, you can see them over here. If you're interested in learning more from me as a coach, I've got online courses on dodgeflowacademy.com. Keep flowing, Ram Ram.